Could we be seeing a second aquatic DLC coming to Jurassic World Evolution 2? With the recent release and announcement of the Prehistoric Marine Species Pack and Free Update 7, many people have been complaining about Free Update 7 and how it really did not address any of the problems that the Lagoons had. Now before we continue, I would like to shout out a smaller channel for creating this theory. Jurassic World Biology recently made a video on this and you should definitely go watch and subscribe to him as he really does make some good content. But, as we all know, the tweet that teased the aquatic DLC had four wallpapers. A Biozone wallpaper, a Malta wallpaper, an a Moza wallpaper, and a Goat wallpaper. But I'm not going to be doing this video alone. Today, Red Panda Reggie is going to be helping me figure this out. If you guys want to see Planet Zoo or Jurassic World Evolution 2 content, then I would definitely recommend to go watch his videos and subscribe to his channel. We're going to figure out how to fix Jurassic World Evolution 2's biggest problem. Now, as both the Malta and Biosyn wallpapers represented big DLCs with a lot of content, many people thought that we could be seeing an aquatic expansion and not an aquatic pack. The reason people think that we could be seeing another aquatic DLC is because some people are stating that the reason we got an aquatic pack and we didn't receive any major lagoon improvements in this update was because this DLC was basically just a filler DLC to be able to give us more marine species before we would receive a full-fledged out aquatic expansion. Currently right now, with all DLCs, we currently have 13 aquatic species. If we were to receive a second aquatic DLC, we would probably have 17 if we were to receive our, the four normal types. Now, I don't think this is impossible, and it is definitely a possibility. But if we were to receive a second aquatic DLC, I think it would come later. But even then, the lagoons still definitely need major improvements to be able to be utilized to their fullest potential. If we were to upgrade our lagoons, what could we do? Some key lagoon improvements for this expansion can include a new paintbrush tool for the lagoons, which would include corals, algae, kelp, seagrasses, just to give that sort of environmental atmosphere that the lagoons are currently lacking in comparison to the land and aviaries. Some new feeders can include the live shark feeder, as well as shrimp and krill for any filter feeding animals we get in the future, ammonites and squid, those sort of swimming cephalopods, some new underwater decorations could include some underwater caves that some of the lagoon creatures could swim through. Some trenches and drop-offs. So underwater cliff sides and canyons. All that sort of stuff would be fantastic to see in a future update such as this. But now let's move on to some more major improvements for our lagoons. Being able to alter the lagoon depth would be an amazing new addition and many people have been asking for this. Many different animals require different depths to feel comfortable in their environment and would honestly make our marine reptiles feel even more alive. We should also be able to change the water color and the water visibility as on we can't even see the Mosasaurus from a lagoon viewing stand which is ridiculous. As we've already seen the addition of, of social animations, we should be able to see more expanded behaviors for our aquatic animals. First, let's give both the Mosasaurus and Tylosaurus social animations as they were the only ones that did not receive them in this new update. We should also be able to see our aquatic animals coming up for air, as we know that they would come up for air in their natural habitat. They should also be able to sleep, which is something that I'm very surprised that they are not able to do yet. They should also try to be able to attack lagoon attractions such as the newly added underwater viewing gallery, if they are found uncomfortable and would honestly add amazing new animations to this game. They should also be able to attack humans, dinosaurs, and flying reptiles, as honestly, they are kind of secluded from our other animals. If they are able to jump out from their lagoon and be able to drag in dinosaurs or humans into the lagoon, this would honestly be an amazing new update and would increase the enjoyability of our marine reptiles. As we've already seen the addition of the underwater viewing gallery, we should at least get one more attraction. A submarine tour is honestly the biggest exclusion from this new update, as honestly I definitely do, did think that we would receive one of these to be able to view our marine reptiles even closer. Many people have also been asking for underwater viewing tunnels that would be able to connect to the underwater viewing gallery. This would honestly be a really good addition and would allow us to view our marine reptiles even further. Another one that I've seen that actually has been the Jurassic World Evolution 2 files where we could be seeing dividers for lagoons in Jurassic World Evolution 2's future. Now, how about we focus on some brand new animals that we could be seeing? Some new species from the Paleozoic era can include the giant orthocone Camaroceras, the sea scorpion Megalograptus, the ancient cartilaginous fish Helicoprion, the Devonian Stethacanthus, the Dracoloptorus, the largest Eurypterid known, and Anomalocarus, one of the earliest predators to have ever lived. Focusing on first the Mesozoic, there's a lot of different animals to choose from. 
The Z Factinus is one of the ones that I hear people asking for a lot, and some people thought that the Dugiostis was the Z Factinus, and honestly, I do think this would be an, a really cool addition, as it has really sharp and cool looking teeth. This animal would look like a really unique looking animal, and would honestly look like a freak of nature. Another one I, I saw people asking for was the Lincictes, basically resembling a giant fish and a more calm looking animal. This animal would be nothing like we have before, as most of our animals are kind of like huge sea monsters. This animal would be a more tame and calm animal when compared to the other aquatic animals we have in game. Now, some smaller animals that we could see could be either the Metrorhynchus or the Symbol Spondylus. Both of these animals are pretty small. These animals would honestly add more size variety to our lagoons. Another animal I see that could be a possibility is the Ammonite. The biggest of which being the Parapusoya, I definitely do think now that the Archelon has come in, that the Ammonite should definitely be included if we were to receive a second aquatic DLC. Pliosaurus, Tanistrophius, and Shastasaurus are all very unique looking animals. The Pliosaurus is one of the most famous animals and it usually is referred to as Predator X. Basically being the T-Rex for our lagoons, this animal should definitely make it into the game and would honestly feel odd if we did not receive the Pliosaurus. Another animal that is incredibly unique is the Tanistrophius. As we now have the lagoon platforms, I definitely do think that the Tanistrophius is a possibility, as it was semi-aquatic. This animal would be nothing like we have before and would honestly resemble a semi-aquatic plesiosaur, which I know we already have a lot of those, as it would be able to walk on the lagoon platform, this would honestly be a very unique animal. The Shastasaurus is an animal that I do think should at least somewhat be considered. Although we just received the Shonisaurus, the Shastasaurus I'm pretty sure is the biggest marine reptile to ever be discovered, is a larger ichthyosaur than even the Shonisaurus, so I don't think it should be discarded. Now, for a more controversial pick, I would definitely at least consider the Sarcosuchus or the Dinosuchus. Now, as the Nothosaurus is more of a semi-aquatic animal and yet it was still put into a lagoon, I don't think that it is impossible they could we see either the Sarcosuchus or the Dinosuchus. We never did give the ability for our semi-aquatic animals such as the Nothosaurus to be able to break out of their lagoons and walk on land. Sarco slash Dinosuchus should be considered as they are crocodilians and would mostly spend their time in both water and land. Another animal that we could see from the Mesozoic is the Hesperornis. Basically being a large flightless bird that swam in the oceans of the Mesozoic, it behaved like a modern day penguin and used its long snout to be able to fish in the waters of the Mesozoic. If this were to be added, this would be our first feathered animal in the lagoons which would make it stand out immensely when compared to our other animals. And some new species from the Cenozoic include Megalodon, the famous giant shark, Leviathan, a more formidable predatory sperm whale, and Basilosaurus, an early whale of the Eocene period. But what do you guys think? Would you want a second aquatic update or DLC? What animals would you want to be included in that DLC? Please let me know down in the comments. And a huge shout out to Jurassic World Biology for creating this theory and Red Panda Reggie for helping me record this video. Make sure to like and subscribe to everyone that was mentioned here today. But I will see you guys next time.